Louisiana Beer Review Special Edition, Magic Hat Number no. Nine Revisited, not quite Paleo. Now I reviewed this back in 2011. I believe it was 2011. Um, 12 ounce bottle, three fourths of a pint, <laughs> Rochester, New York. No Vermont anymore. Pale ale with natural flavors, 5.1% alcohol. I was watching a review from 2009. He really liked it. This is back when Magic Hat was well regarded. And when Magic Hat Brewery used to make a whole lot of beers. This is the only relic left. That's it. Um, it's produced at the Genesee Brewery in Rochester, New York. It's owned by FIFCO, F-I-F-C-O. Um, and that guy was saying that it was 4.6. So in 2009, he's reading off the bottle that said 4.6. But it's rated at 5.1 now. And they've never said what the natural flavors are, but over the years people have speculated apricot flavoring, and I believe that. It seems to be the case. Eyes check, ears check, mind check. That's on the inside the bottle cap. Convenient twist cap. Yeah, I remember back when twist caps were not considered like anathema to craft beer. Uh, Beta used to be twist cap. Shiner. Um, shipyard. All twist caps, and then all of a sudden it was like, oh, uh, the memo went out. It must be a pry cap. <laughs> now, it, <coughs> we know now it's must be a can. Off-white head, very thick head, and a clear, quite bubbly, orange appearance. They ought to have a company that would buy up rights to old brands and have, like, the classic series, and they could have, like, um, Buffalo Bills, Pumpkin Ale, and um, some Pyramid Brewing beers, right? They could have a New Albion beer brand. They could bring back um, Pete's Wicked Ale. I, I bought that back in 96. Yeah, we should do that. Well, they should do it. I'm not going to do it. Okay, spongy head. Let's go with the aroma. It gets like 72 on, on tap. You know, they're saying it's good, but... But... Smells like a lot of bread. Fruity, pungent... Fermented grains. Honestly, the smell is quite nice. Uh... I know in this day and age, 2023, at time of this recording, you're not supposed to like this beer. It's supposed to be pretty much disregarded. I get that. But I ran across a six-pack, six ninety-nine, uh, nine ninety-nine, nine ninety-nine six-pack. I had to get it. Yeah. Let's go with the taste. Cheers. I went to the brewery, 2016. They didn't give tours. They only let you go around this little showcase brewery area and then the floor was wet so the guy was like you can't go down here you might slip so you didn't really get a brewery tour and um then the brewmaster who was about to resign at the end of the month he was ranting about how they were trying to make him produce hazy beers and he was like in total revolt against that but that was 2016 i don't know what he's doing now but it was interesting you know that he was so in uproar about it and this is still one of the old clear ones, you know, or you, you remember back when I, when all craft beers were clear as a, you know, clear as a bell. It's actually a pleasant flavor. There's 20 IBUs, a good, noticeable bitterness, but it's mild, but it's there and it's, gives it character. 20 bitterness units, probably three out of five hop cones when you look at it in that respect two and a half three somewhere there 2.75 out of three hop cones <laughs> uh, sweetness very low at the most two out of five sugar cubes medium body and a dry finish now when i first first started the beer drinking experience 
project, I call it a project beer drinking project, in February 1996. I was trying any brand. Macro, middle crow, micro, didn't matter. And I've stuck to that. And so, um, I get Miller High Life. And, oh, that's very nice, and so forth. Uh, Miller High Life Light. Oh, yes, very nice for what it is, light beer. And then we had the, um, these kinds. And um, at that time, the most extreme beer, I guess, really was maybe a Dixie White Chocolate Ale, which didn't last. I never got to try it. And they had um, Bigfoot Sierra Nevada Barley Wine Style Ale. That was probably the most extreme products around at that time. And um, I remember everything was clear. You wouldn't see a hazy beer. You just wouldn't see it. Um, I don't recall seeing it. Unless it was maybe a Hefeweizen, yeah, okay, then you'd see it, but then, yeah, that would, then you would see that, but you didn't see it in Pale Ales or India Pale Ales or, um, or even Stouts or anything, and I, I'm not saying that's a bad thing, okay, some people got this idea that I, I think it's a bad thing, I don't, just, I say brew whatever you want to brew, my opinion personally is I don't think it's a good thing either, I don't, I'm not fed into it, but I'm not uh, like, you know, I'm not like a, a vampire to a crucifix where if I see a hazy beer, I'm like thrown off by it or, or, or going to give it a low rating. That's not true. That isn't true. So people who said that are wrong. I don't give beers a low score just because they're hazy. I score them on how they taste. If it's hazy and it tastes great, give it a high a score in that, uh, you know, outstanding, most excellent, outstanding. We all have our preferences. I just look at the quality of it. This one is pretty good quality. I mean, I'm probably being colored by the fact that where it's being brewed, but it does have like a Genesee. It does seem to have a Genesee yeast profile house style going with it. Not that dissimilar from a Genesee cream ale, but I can't say that, so forget it. Um, they probably just took the same recipe and converted it over to Rochester and then s slowly wound down operations in Burlington, Vermont and shut it down. Um, and I'm not part of that business decision. So, but anyway, how does this score? Well, I mean, it's all right. Pale ale with natural flavors. That's a run-of-the-mill thing today. Years ago, it was like quite unique, and uh, it used to come in the big bomber bottles. Occasionally, you'd see the later on you saw the pint cans, but not really around here. Louisiana mainly, we just got the bombers, and more than likely the six-pack of these 12-ounce bottles, which we still get. In a few isolated locations. I found this at Bromart, B E R E A U X, Bromart, on Louisiana Highway 48, westbound, all right, in River Ridge, Louisiana. I don't know of anybody else that has it. I'm going to give it an A. Uh, I gave it an A minus in our duo review, but um, that was a pretty controversial review, like um, where my friend David was sort of appalled when he, he saw what it was and he. He had some interesting things to say about it, and I didn't mind, of course, I didn't mind at all, but um, right now, it's going, it's tasting like a 93, yeah, an A, a most excellent beer. It's a relic. If it disappeared in a month, I wouldn't be shocked, and I guess nobody would care. Maybe nostalgic people would care, but, I mean, you never hear about this product anymore. But like I say, I like to check out the relics. Uh, yeah, why you think I pulled that up uh, when I was in Memphis? Why you think I pulled that um, the two big bottles of uh, Champagne off the shelf? Champagne, the original and a flavored one. Well, they're all flavored, but uh, that's an old company. Champagne goes back to the 1930s. I say, but that is a bum drink. Was it probably always that? <laughs> yeah. So, but just think of all the generations of derelicts who, no, I'm just joking, but, um, that's terrible to say, but, uh, I like to find these old legacy brands, so, 
Laissez les bon temps relais, an A, a most excellent beer, and I'm going to end this review by saying, no, don't forget visiting our brewery. Just uh, buy it. If you see it, buy it. And, yeah, you probably like it, or you could possibly like it. Thank you.